Hi there, I'm back and in this video I want to talk about Intune Remote Help again. Now you may already have seen our videos for Windows and Android, but in this video I want to talk about the new release of Intune Remote Help for macOS devices. Now it comes in two flavours, both for your unenrolled and your enrolled devices, and you can purchase the licences for this both through the Intune suite or as a standalone add-on. So let's see how we can set this up and see what the experience is like. Okay, to start off here, I just want to quickly go over the latest information that you get on the Microsoft website. So this is the website and I'll include it as part of the video for information. If we scroll down, we will see effectively what the capabilities are. So you do get remote help with unenrolled devices and we're gonna see that as part of the experience in this video. You can set up conditional access and this is primarily for your enrolled devices, not your unenrolled devices. And there are a set of compliance warnings that you get. For an, for an unenrolled device, you're gonna basically be warned that the device is unenrolled. Uh, but if the device is enrolled and not compliant, you will get information on that as well. So that gives you an idea on whether as a helper that you want to then go ahead and uh, complete that session. Uh, you've got a chat functionality and this is obviously gives you that enrichment of uh, fu functionality that, that you get to chat to the end user as part of your request session. Now, from a supported devices perspective, you've got, you know, these three different versions of Mac OS versions, and you can actually initiate or have a session with a helper through the different browsers here. So you've got the three choices of browser, which is a good thing, right? Um, the other thing you need to take note of is both the helper and sharer will need to be able to access through port 443 these endpoints okay so if you are having restrictions initiate for your end users through uh, a proxy or or firewall or whatever you you set up on your network you will need to make sure that these are accessible and the last thing i just want to um, highlight here is basically this is a screen share service at the moment and you're not going to get that full enriched experience that you will get say on windows but I think this will kind of be uh, enhanced going forward. That's my, my guess on that, but I would think that that would be the case. So we're starting off here in my Intune Admin Center, and the first place I wanna to go to is the Tenant Administration. Now you should see an option in here for remote help, so if you click that. Now just to highlight that I'm logged on as a global admin here, so in order to set this up, you will need to have admin rights. Now, first off, you need to go into settings. You will see that I've got my service already enabled, but if you haven't, you would click the, or the select the configure option. And here, this is where you get the drop down option. So even though mine's enabled, I can go ahead and disable it if I want. You've also got the option for allow remote help to unenroll devices, which is only an option available to macOS devices and Windows, even though this can be rolled out to Android. The last option you've got here is disable chat. Now I've got no because I want to use it, but you can go ahead and change that if you like. So I'll go ahead and close that. And just for reference, if you do select the remote help sessions, this will give you the information, the sessions that you've been running with your end users. And this is where you can monitor that, uh, that activity. Now there are a few other prerequisites we need to set up. If I go into users, I need to ensure that my user has got um, a license, okay? So this is essentially my helper, my remote helper. And if I go into remote help user that I've already set up and then into licenses, I can go into assignments and you can see that I've got an Intune Remote Help license already assigned. If you haven't, you will need to assign that and the end user, the admin um, remote help user will also need an EMS or Intune license assigned to them as well in order to carry this out. The other thing we need to consider here is the actual person or helper that's gonna be supporting the end user here. So the actual remote help user 
Um, in order to do that, you can assign some RBAC or role-based access control to that individual person or in a group. Now, if we go into tenant administration, just show you where it is here, and you look at roles, you'll get a standard set of built-in roles already built for you. And the one that's quite uh, common here is the help desk operator. If we look at the properties of this role, you can and scroll down, you'll see that under remote help, we get a view screen, elevation, unattended control, and take full control. Now that gives us all out all we need with the Mac OS because basically you can only view the screen so you're only going to get view only support or remote help for this individual user that's all that's available right now for mac os and you're going to get that within the browser so if we quickly look at the um, website from microsoft on this this specifically for mac os and remote help you're going to see that uh, they will show you that you need to you can add these permissions take full control elevation and view screen and you can achieve that by actually creating if i go back to those um those roles we can create our own new uh, bespoke role here if we need to for the time being i've just set up my help you help desk user uh, with the help desk operator role so they should have enough permissions to carry this out so we've gone in and set up the remote help service in our Intune tenant. We've assigned our user with the right permissions and licenses to carry the actions out. All we need to do now is go ahead and try this out. So we're back in the Intune admin center and the first thing I need to go to is to devices. And then I'm gonna choose Mac OS. So I'm gonna select my Mac OS device. So here we are, we've got Andy's Mac Studio here. And we're going to get a number of options on here. So if you see on the three dots at the end there, you click that, you'll get the new remote assistant session and take note that it is in preview, right? So I'll go ahead and click that. Before we go further, though, I just want to show you that I am logged on to my Intune Admin Center as my remote help user here. So if you remember, we just set that up. Um, I'm not in as a Intune admin or global admin. So this is kind of replicating the scenario that we might follow. So I'll go ahead and hit the continue here. Now, if you are trying to create a session, initiate a session with an, a user with an enrolled device, you generally, you would use this approach here. So you'd copy the link and send that to the end user. They would put that into their browser, uh, follow that link, and if need be, you give them the passcode, and then they would start that session that way. For an unenrolled device, what we need to do, and I have tried this for an unenrolled device by using this approach, and it comes up with an error, right? So you will experience an error. Whether that will um, be rectified going forward, I'm not quite sure, but it's not quite clear here as yet, and maybe this information will change on the, the choice that you take, depending on whether it's enrolled or unenrolled, the device you're trying to help. So I'm gonna um, click this link here. It will open up a new browser, browser window. And at the same time, I'm gonna bring in my my browser from an end user point of view. So I've got Chrome here, okay, and I'm gonna go into aka.ms slash rh. And it's gonna ask me to log on with my work credential. So I need to do that first. And once I've done that, it's gonna prompt me for a code to use, all right? So it's asking me to use the code. So I'll move this out of the way for a second. I'm gonna copy this security code here. So I'll copy that to clipboard. And then I'm gonna click that I sent the code. Now, if I bring back in my end user browser and I paste that in and then click the share screen, it's gonna go and say it's waiting for the helper effectively. So again, I'll take that out of the way. And hopefully this is gonna tell us, yes, there we go. So it's saying that Lynn Robbins, as we've, we're initiating the session with, given some details on that end user. And it's saying, do we wanna start the screen sharing session? So I need to go back to the end user by clicking that.
and at this point it's gone basically it sent the request to the end user and I can either decline or allow this so I'm going to go ahead and hit the allow and at this point we go back to the helper okay so um, it's telling me if you remember we had this compliance feature where at the top it's saying warning the person's device you're helping is not enrolled okay so it gives the helper the the opportunity to kind of make the decision from that point onwards but I'm going to continue and back on the end users site or web page we got the option here right so it's basically setting up this session but it's telling me that I can choose the options here so for example I can choose a window I can choose the entire screen for example I'm gonna hit a chrome tab and I don't have one open here so if I go back and do that I can then select the tab and I'm gonna click the share it's also got the option for you know share the tab audio right but I'm gonna turn that off for the time being so I'll hit the share and I'll move that back out the way and this is where you're going to get the experience from the helper perspective. So in the web page, you'll sh you can see the end user's device and you can see the web page that they're sharing. At the same time, I've got this chat facility at the top here. OK, so if I initially say hi there. Back on the end users page, I can see that there's been a message uh, submitted and I can see and I can reply to that so in this um, particular example you are guided by the end user okay so you can either have this chat or if you do use audio it might be that you're talking to the end user on the phone say and you can guide them through if it was just this web page or if it was the entire device you can guide them to certain things to troubleshoot their issues at this point from a helper perspective i can actually hit the uh, leave button or from an end user point of view i can click the stop sharing now there is a known issue at the moment that if i do that from an end user point of view and i'm going to do that here i'll select that it will stop the session and it will say waiting for screen sharing okay now this won't necessarily update and it could kind of leave you hanging and for a little while before you know what's going on so that that is a known issue and I, I believe that's being looked at at the moment so thanks for watching hopefully this is giving the information you need for remote help check out the other videos that we have on Intune Suite but also on remote help and the macOS and iOS management series thanks for now and hopefully we'll see you soon